Hey gang, Scott Davenport here. This video is one in a series on Photo Raw 2020 to help you get up and running with the software quickly. If you're new to On One, these will help you out. If you're very new to On One and you haven't purchased yet, you're thinking about it, check the links below. There's some discount codes for you as well as pointers to other information that'll help you learn the software and get working on your photos. In this video, we'll look at a more advanced workflow where we'll build up a look from the ground up. So we'll leverage some of the AI tools. If you watch the basic workflow video, you saw those. We'll also add our own flavor, our own taste to it, and do a little bit of selective application of some of the different filters. So looking at this scene here, uh, the very first thing I'm going to do is in the lower left corner, just going to hide the presets bar. Uh, I don't need to see that preset browser. I'm going to do everything uh, directly here with the photo itself and quickly grab the crop tool and adjust my crop a little bit just to take a couple of distracting elements off the edge there. Wonderful. I'll start in develop, uh, skimming camera profiles. We can see different looks for the scene just by hovering over each one. And I kind of do look like how the landscape look that really made those greens jump out. This camera profile, it's an initial interpretation of the raw data. I've adjusted no sliders yet, just selected a different profile to tell on one, what if you were to look at the raw data in a slightly different way? And you can also look at your different camera profiles that would be what is in the back of your camera. Actually, camera vivid looks nice as well on one landscape. I think on one landscape's doing a little more of a balanced job. The greens aren't going over the top. Now I usually do start with AI Auto just to see what it gives me. It tends to open up some shadows a little bit. Uh, it looks like the uh, the greens are getting a little overpowering there, so we'll, we'll back that off just a little bit with that auto slider, and that adjusts all of the other sliders accordingly. For white balance, in this case, I'll choose the picker. And I want to choose something I want to be white, which would be this water. And that warmed the photo up a little bit, but it's making sure that I have that this is going to be pure white. In my opinion, the white wash, I want to be white. So that's the selection point there. The vibrance, I'm going to back that off a little bit. So I'm not overpowering on the greens. And this is starting to feel pretty good. I don't think I need to do any noise reduction. This was shot at a very low ISO, so the details does not need to be visited. Lens corrections are applied. So I've got a pretty good look for the photo right now. I wanna get into a little more detailed work. Moving into effects, one of the filters I love to have on my photos is dynamic contrast. That gives a very nice punch of detail, but in a natural way. Right before that filter, and after, just making these mosses nice and crisp. But other areas, such as the water, that's remaining nice and smooth. It's giving hints of texture there, but it's not overpowering. Another filter that I want to visit is the color adjustment filter. These greens are still feeling a little bit hot. So I can go into the greens channel and just take down their saturation a little bit. I'll push this very far so you can see it really get downplayed. I can bring it back up. And for this scene, I think it really only needs to be downplayed in the foreground before and after. It's just a little bit hot in the foreground. So I'll click on my masking icon, choose a gradient shaped mask, drop it on the scene here, and just rotate that like this. So now our mask is showing this is only affecting the foreground. White areas are affected, dark areas of the mask are unaffected. Masking is a deep, deep subject to get into. Just know that you can mask individual filters in effect to any area of the scene that you like. Now another filter I think I'll add for this photo is the new sun flare. I'll grab sun flare and it's positioning the sun flare over here. I have some controls. I can reverse that horizontally. That's more appropriate for this photo. And with the crosshairs, I can even position that exactly where I need it, kind of right around there. 
control the amount. Let's take the amount down some, just kind of adding a bit of glow coming out from that upper left corner where the sun would have been coming through. And it can change the saturation of the flare. I may add a little bit of, of sunshine fuel back into the photo itself. I have a video that goes very deep into this new filter. It's, it's quite a nice one. It's nice and powerful. Before that sun filter, after, we still take that, that opacity down. It's a little bit strong. Just want a hint of that sunlight. And then last but not least, I'll add a vignette. So here's vignette. Bunch of different options here. Uh, I usually try out strong or big softy. I think for this I'll choose strong and I'll take the feather slider all the way to zero so I can see where the edge of that vignette is. Increase the size, then push that feather back out. And I mentioned we have masking. I don't want to feather away, or sorry, vignette away my nice sun glow there. So I'll open the mask one more time, drop my pin on the scene here, and I want to make sure I am not masking away. Let's do it this way. I want to make sure I have a vignette in these corners, but not up at the top where I've added that nice, nice flare. So this is only affecting the vignette. This is not affecting anything else. So before the vignette, after, you can see that upper left corner is really not changing at all. And that's just so I can keep that nice, you know, directional fade of light that we added in to the scene. So all of those things added up. Let's take a quick look at the preview before and after. Pretty nice result. So what did we do? We used develop, did some basic adjustments, leveraging camera profiles and the AI tools, and then went into effects and selected a few filters to stack them up and add up to a signature unique look. Did also leverage basic masking tools to limit some of those filters to only segments of the scene. So this is a more advanced workflow and you can go much, much deeper. The tools in the filters and the masking tools run very, very deep in Photo Raw. So you can really fine tune and craft about any look that you could imagine. I hope you've enjoyed the video. My name's Scott Davenport. Thanks for watching.